We're at Texas Frightmare Weekend at an undisclosed location, and we have abducted four guests to talk to us and Little Spark Films about uh, their experience torturing souls, uh, uh, writing entertaining stories, and shooting short films. So with us today, we have the fabulous author Barbie Wilde, <laughs> author and director Nicholas Vince, Hi. Actor Simon Banford, who keeps a painting in his house that keeps getting old as he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, this isn't an undisclosed location. It's actually my hotel room. <laughs> and I've invited you all in. Welcome. Yeah. And someone who recently stepped into the shoes of a very striking hell priest uh, for the latest installment of Hellraiser Judgment, Paul yes. T. Taylor. Yes. Uh, well, thank you. So, nice. <laughs> So we've had a pleasure of talking to all of you before in the Barker cast, and, uh, and this is a dream come true for myself to be able to do this, this sort of uh, conversation with you guys today uh, with Ryan uh, Dan Hauser, my co-host. Uh, so I've been thoroughly entertained by your written work, I've been seduced by your characters on the screen, and I've been charmed by your generosity and candor. So thank you very much for being with us today. So how was it like for you guys to get together for the screening? You guys did a panel, right? Yeah, we did. It we was we fun. did a panel after being up 26 hours yeah. and uh, two, well, we Well, and Doug I, was okay. He just had to come from Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh. yeah. But we were all well, kind of tired. Yeah, and, Barbie and, and I had two glasses of wine and a, and a, and a, and a martini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we only Which, had one glass of wine and a martini. And you were able to talk them into moving. You had, had two, two glasses, glasses of, wine of wine and a martini and 26 mm -hmm. hours without sleep. So now that Hellraiser celebrated its 30th anniversary mm -hmm. and had screenings not only at the British Film Institute but all over the world, um, it seems like for former video nasty, uh, it finally has been uh, earned its place in the pantheon of British no, film, right? it's never officially a video nasty. No? Video nasty is a term that was introduced by the British press. Okay. And there was a list of videos which were video nasty. And Mary Whitehouse. And Mary, yeah. Yes, yeah, the British press and Mary Whitehouse. Um, is this so, a, an American equivalent of Mary Whitehouse? Do you know who Mary Whitehouse is? Well, she was a, a she campaigner was a for, for moral, uh, moral decency. decency. Oh yeah, yeah. you've yeah. heard the email in But white. I actually yeah. think a friend of mine, Star. Tim Dry, who was the monster in Extra, uh -huh. Extra was considered a video nasty. Really? Although yeah. I don't Tipper know if Gore, it's actually on. Actually, Tipper Gore was, Tipper Gore? Re was yeah. really big into uh, putting label, like, Warning labels on on music, and exactly. that's why we have warning yeah. explicit lyrics now. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I actually see that that trying to get on topic that the <laughs> that <laughs> I've always regarded in in many ways uh, Hellraiser and Hellraiser Two as, as almost like art cinema mm -hmm. because of a Clive's sensibilities as an artist and the the beauty that was put into the design of of the Cenobites. I mean, you know, they are exquisite in a sort of hideously gory, wonderful way, and uh, very unusual. And of course, the, the lament configuration, which is this extraordinary thing. This is not your normal video nasty with a guy with a chainsaw running through the forest chasing a girl in a boob tube with stilettos. These are, you know, <laughs> as I, I said last night, these are monsters that talk to you. They're, they're, they have sensibilities beyond, you know, ripping and slashing and It was also, I mean, beyond even those, the beauty of the house of the decaying house that they walk into at the beginning with mm. the little icons that they find on the table and the cockroaches and the beetles running over them. There's, yeah. Yeah. there's like so much art. detail. Yeah. The religious iconography. Yeah. 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 But yeah. see, this is yeah. why the film has resonated through the years with people. And they say, oh, well, let's just watch Hellraiser and Pinhead. And they watch it and they realize it's more than just yeah. that. It also is about the human monsters of Julie and Frank and, and sexual obsession and all the other weird desires that the Cenobites promise. It's it has so many different levels. It's it's kind of beyond your normal horror, yes. which is why I think people are still very impressed with it. And also, if you go to places like Deviant Art and all of the other art, um, pin it, not Pinterest, but Art Pinterest. Station. Yeah, these the are you know, yeah. all the art, all the tattoo work, mm -hmm. all this extraordinary Excuse things it. that were inspired by this idea from Clive, and that's yeah. what makes it more than just, I think, an Run of the mill horse. But certainly, a lot of the mainstream media these days have kind of picked up on the 30th anniversary. There was 
There was articles mm. in the Guardian and yeah, the Times. Yeah, and yeah. It's nice. kind of mainstream newspapers. They would have never touched it when right. the film came right. out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I remember a very embarrassing moment. It's not my death scene moment. Um, and I had to walk around all day long with that. Can I tentacle. say this? Channard's penis tentacle glued to my <laughs> vagina throat, right? Yeah. Yes. And walking around all day. And the that was nothing to do with the film, though. That was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was just Jeff oh trying to torture gosh. me. But that was, at the same time, I was doing film review for ITV, mm -hmm. late night film review. And my hero was Barry Norman. And they got Barry down because he hated the first film. And they thought, why they thought he would somehow melt if he made, oh, let's just go on the set and see how we too. But he was sort of wandering around in his trench coat, and I saw my hero, mm -hmm. and I hid behind some boxes. Oh. <laughs> and they I'll, kidnapped him. Didn't they? Yeah, kidnapped the story him. goes that they locked him in like a, a, an office yeah. and asked him, like, why are you doing this? Why, why did you, you give us such a bad review yeah. on the first film? It's British horror. Why are you trashing it? Oh, like he that? did yeah. introduce his, uh, his review on the first film, but with the words, some people think that Clive Barker is a genius. I have many people who, you know, friends who res I respect who mm -hmm. think that Clive Barker, but I don't. I, you know, you know, oh, oh, he said that. Yeah. Oh, spanking for Barry. Yeah. Actually, he's dead now. Yeah. So. Well, and speaking of the 30th anniversary, we should be coming up on the Hellbound 30th anniversary now, right? I mean, it's oh, yeah. just yeah. 2018. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's I hope that we can see the same amount of, of, uh, of celebration for Hellbound. That, Do you know yeah. what I think is really adorable is that so many people come up and say, well, it's actually made lists of being, as horror sequels go, of being right up mm, there. Yes. What good, good horror sequel. I mean, it is a direct thing like, you know, Quantum of Solace is a direct follow-on from, mm, you yeah. know, um, Casino Royale, and, and that it's the events are happening right a few uh -huh. In moments later, later. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. like yeah. Halloween too. Yeah. And yeah. also, people like the idea. There's a bit more delving into the background of the characters and finding out what's yeah. what the poop is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tend to consider Elliot that Spencer. as kind of a double feature for me. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, if I see yeah. the first, yeah. I see yeah. the yeah. second one. Yeah. 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 You know, and you get to see yeah. where they're from. I mean, you'd never get to see that again in in, in the in the sequels after that. Yeah, and also you've got some true. killer lines. Nothing personal, baby. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so have you noticed the revival thanks to this Arrow 2K restoration and uh, all these screenings and the 30th anniversary? Has there been a, uh, has it impacted your convention experiences with the fans? Have you noticed a I'm revival? Very luckily being invited to introduce two screenings now of the 35 mil print, which wow. they have, which they've been in the UK, which they've let uh, out. Uh, one in, the Prince Charles Cinema last year in the cinema which first screened Hellraiser uh, a couple of days before its major release. Is that the Prince Charles? The Prince Charles in Leicester Square. <laughs> it and always we shows really dodgy films. Two, two, you know, <laughs> two to three days to the day before, you know, 30 years later. Not to be confused and with then, Prince Albert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, recent down in Bournemouth. And, uh, Talking of pleasure from pain. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, I think the fact that. You, the whole there is a whole thing now of screening 35 mil prints uh, yeah. of the classic films like 2001 now the yeah. unrestored version that's been screened yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, the uh, the offer brought you all together with Ken Cranham uh, yes. who you hadn't worked with uh, since Hellbound uh, yeah. and and Ollie and Ollie Smith and Ollie, and Ollie Smith. Smith absolutely Skinless Frank yes yep. uh, so how fun was that I, I'm very happy that the Dark Ditties is I'm going to keep moving forward with the two extra chapters, uh, Mrs. Wiltshire and Finders Keepers. How's it been working with Dead Mouse Productions? Because it seemed like they're really enthusiastic, talented people. Well, of course, they did the Leviathan documentary. Right. And so we got to know all the guys there. And then they said, listen, can I send you, you know, can I send you scripts? And, and but, you know, every, all the other Cenobites are in it. I went, well, I'll have to, have to do it, you know. <laughs> but the script was great. I hadn't acted in 17 years, so mm -hmm. I was beside myself. And, um, but I thought, wow, you know, dead on page 18, got some good <laughs> <Spoilers>. lines. <laughs> um, and it doesn't, it doesn't spoil it, actually, because it's sort of the way it's set up, telling them what it is, kind of thing. But I thought, this is good, I can do this. You know, it was a nice easing back into, into the profession. And, um, but it, it's, it's an enormous amount of fun, and people are acting with panache, and, and, um, and the, the 
It's a good word. <laughs> right um, one. Uh, but also the special effects are fabulous, and the set mm -hmm. was amazing, and the writing was wonderful. It's won a screenplay award. Um, Neil Nick Morris. Neil Morris, yeah. 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 Neil Morris. Uh, and so it's 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 a it was a fine start, and I think the um, you know I think the ultimate aim is to to have some kind of TV series. Yeah, that'd be fun. wonderful. So mm. but they're just just doing them and seeing if they can sell them, and the, the quality is I've seen little bits of an, another one, and it's absolutely magnificent. And if I, I was listening to um, uh, The Hellbound Heart, the audio play of The Hellbound, yeah. Hellbound yeah. Heart, which we That's recorded okay. recently. Mm -hmm. So it was me sitting on the train, cheerfully listening to myself play a sleazy businessman. Yeah. And then suddenly it goes, uh, you know, Oh, 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 no, that's not nice. I don't like that. <laughs> it's not like I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. But it's very strange. I was yeah. wondering if you... You were immersed in the story. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You were talking, we were talking earlier about kind of learning the techniques and things of filming and how you never, you never really stop. You, it's it's, especially coming from a theatre background because mm. they're so different. Yeah. Well, this is what you were talking about last night, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's just trying to... It's a whole new technique that you have to learn. And, and it never, you never stop because every project is completely different. Have you ever no seen Michael's no, Michael, no Michael Kane did a brilliant master class on film acting. And if this was years ago. And we're not talking about Hellraiser right now, we're talking about Michael Kane. But <laughs> I'd like him to, Michael, you, I, we'd love, I'd love you to be in my Zulu Zombies. Um, <laughs> there we go. Zulu Zombies. Oh, he would be good. I know, exactly. <laughs> He's done Zulu. Yeah. The best yeah. thing yeah. ever to I, do Zulu Zombies. I, I wow, I had that audition for me. You, you can. Yeah. Do you know his agent? <laughs> <laughs> I read his book on it. Some yeah. It simplifies it and it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, so Paul, how was your experience last night doing the panel? Uh, I heard you it were pretty a, active. It was a trip. Well, <laughs> and I, you got to meet. I you met Doug Bradley and. Uh, yes, we were in the bar waiting. Luckily, nothing exploded. And, and everyone. <laughs> everyone arrived. And you I guys just didn't tear nice. yourselves apart. It, it, it wow. was just. It was. It was surreal and fabulous. And of course, and, you know, this has been. This weekend is start it started out with such a an and energy that's yeah. yeah yeah I'm sure I'll have a depression at the end of the weekend <laughs> yeah it's okay it's okay Hopefully not. How, how do you like how joining, joining, joining the Cenobite family how do I how do you like joining the, the Cenobite family it's the coolest thing that's <laughs> yeah. ever happened to me I mean oh. seriously it is it is I, I saw the movie yeah. in '87 I never imagined that I would ever be in uh, play one of those monsters you know I mean it was just and, and Pinhead was just, as everyone knows, just sexy and beautiful and dangerous and smart and I know, all that stuff. <laughs> 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 I was doing that for myself. But, but, you know, I mean, never expected this to happen. Paul, what sort of feeling came inside you when you saw yourself for the first time in costume on a mirror as, as the Hell Priest? It, well, it's 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 not just one thing. I mean, it's sort of a process. That's the mm -hmm. thing. You're not just. It's not like they do your makeup and you're facing away from the right. mirror. Then they go, ta-da! You know. So, <laughs> uh, so plus having seen the first several movies, you know, of course I know basically what I'm going to look like. So, mm -hmm. but getting there, I mean, I don't see well, and I didn't have my contacts in, so I couldn't even really see the mirror, which pr right. probably was maybe a good thing. I'm not sure, but. I didn't really get a chance to look at myself till I was alone in the trailer, waiting, mm -hmm. um, in the costume with, uh, we put the contacts in last right before I went on, but it was just, it was, to use a word that's possibly overused, surreal. It was mm -hmm. truly surreal because I was joining this pantheon of, of horror that, that was, I don't even think I know how much is behind it. I mean, hearing you guys talk, I don't even think I realize w what is everything that's behind. First of all, Clive Barker's writing, all of it. Um, but it was just such a trip. But the, th the fact is, in 1987, when I saw Hellraiser, I fell in love with Pinhead. He was, became instantly my favorite horror icon. Right. And because of everything I've already said to describe him, and um, 
It's so weird how the universe works. And what's the status on Blue Eyes? You've written the story. What can you tell us about it? Because well, it's... Chris Alexander described it as as if Clive Barker made life force by the way of necromantic. It's really <laughs> fascinating. It's got a good science fiction undercurrent to it, but it's really a slice of a larger story. It was called Beauty and the Scowl, mm -hmm. and it was a crime story, and I was going to turn it into a novel about serial killer who killed women. But basically it's about this homeless guy, and it's, it's sort of quite rich, his background and stuff, and he, he's got the shopping trolley or car, and he goes into this alleyway, and he... He sees this blanket and he goes, whoa, that's really cool, a blanket, you know, and he's tugging it out, it's wrapped around the body and it mm -hmm. unwraps it, oh, it's no. this beautiful girl, fresh, it smells a little bit like hamburger that's been wrapped in cellophane for uh -huh. too long, and he's like going, well, she's not going to mind, and he hasn't done anything in a long time, and she's so beautiful and sexy, and, <laughs> and he falls in love with her, right, and he gives her a name to give her a bit of personality, and uh. then... And then he, he tries to wrap her up, but he can't do the knots oh. right. And, you know, he doesn't want to wrap to get at her beautiful face. Right. And then, because she's been killed by a serial killer. Yes. And then Maybe he Michael tries Faraday. to find, that's the story, and that was, he was going to get his friends, and then we were going to find out who's killing all these beautiful oh. girls. And speaking of movies, uh, uh, Nicholas, you directed your first short, The Night Whispered. Um, uh, available on Real House. I available on Real House, yes. I, I saw all the extras and all the stuff. I love dogs. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry. it's about three friends that missed the last tram home and walked yep. through a dark country park. Mm -hmm. And uh, uninvited, a sinister gentleman and his dog join them. Mm -hmm. As they walk, one hears a whisper, turns, and vanishes. And then I'm not going to say anything else. Yeah. But um, are you looking to direct again soon? In fact, I've done two more short films since Oh, then. okay. In fact, one of them's screening tomorrow night. Oh. Uh, here at Texas Frightmare, Your Appraisal. Your Appraisal. Uh, right. Yeah, that's my second short film. And then I've got a third one that's going to be part of a horror anthology called For We Are Many, mm -hmm. um, which is a demon one, and uh, which is where you just mm. need to re redo some stuff. It's like all these things, you know, you feel like, yeah, that's great. Oh, we've got feedback. Okay, we're going to rethink. Okay, we'll redo that. Okay, we'll do something slightly right. different. So, yeah, I, I, uh, and some other good stuff as well. So, I really enjoy doing it. It's very interesting. I was reading um, the program for Texas Frightmare. Mm -hmm. I've got a quotation from Matthew Lillard. He says, you know, whenever I direct, I do it with energy because I love energy. And I thought, yeah, it's very true. If you're trying to encourage people to do. Um, I mean, the big joke on uh, not so much the night whispered, um, which is being done very well, but on your appraisal, is the mm -hmm. fact that when we were filming it, I'd be sitting there going, oh, God, <laughs> God. And Paddy, who was my, uh, Paddy Murphy, who was my first AD, just looked at me and said, Nick, you wrote this. I said, I know, but it's my mate Dawson there, and it's right. like, you know, it's different when it's there in front, mm -hmm. and you've got it in your head. Well, thank you very much, everybody, yeah. for being here with us and, and being so generous with your time. Well, thank you for and chatting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a lovely it, time. It's a wonderful pleasure to have you here. Ryan, yeah. So I hope to see you thank again you. at the convention floor soon. Thank okay. you. Cool. And I love your t-shirts, your Clive Barker. <laughs> oh, those, those are great. Cool. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So cool. Look at that. We just got these about an hour ago. Oh. <laughs> and thank you to Little Spark work. Films for doing this. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You guys rule. <laughs>